shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to consider your word, O oh God. We thank you for your presence. He is here with us. And I pray the Lord shall minister to us even as we spend time, O oh God, hearing your word. Thank you for everyone who is here, dear Father, because they are here on a divine appointment, O oh God, from you. And I pray the Lord shall use me as your vessel, dear God. I surrender myself to you, dear Father, that the meditation of my heart, dear Father, and also my mouth will be you know, acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Good morning, and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm so delighted to be in uh, this congregation this morning. I want to thank God for his faithfulness and goodness. My name is uh, Peter Gaiku. I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I bring to you greetings from my family and from the BSK uh, Bible Society of Kenya Fraternity. Uh, where I serve as a council member or a board member and uh, worship at Ridgeways Baptist Church uh, just down the road. Um, and this month of September is dedicated uh, as a, in BSK we have dedicated this as a Bible month. So a number of us are in various churches this morning sharing the word of God and just bringing the enlightenment that, uh, you know, uh, you know God, that the word of God is a light and to our lives. I also bring you greetings from Bank Bangkok, Thailand, where I'm based as a field worker for a mission for Global Frontiers Mission, where we serve, you know, in sharing the word of God and you know, preaching and sharing, uh, spreading the word of God and uh, supporting and training pastors and planting churches in that part of the world. And I'll be sharing a little bit much more about that as I speak uh, this, uh, this morning. Um, our readings have been done very well, and uh, I thank God that uh, you know, uh, it, the two readings have, were quite clear. And uh, this morning I'll be sharing on the sermon on the topic, the light of the world, uh, the light of God which, is, which, which conquers darkness. The light of the word of God, which conquers darkness. And, uh, you know, the readings that have been made this morning uh, to us are quite familiar uh, with us. Uh, we've, I'm sure you have interacted with this words uh, before. And I'll be focusing, you know, uh, more on the second reading, uh, which was from the book of Mark, chapter 10, 46 to 52. And then I'll also be sharing uh, a few words uh, from you know, uh, uh, Psalm, uh, the Psalm that you have read, uh, Psalms 18, uh, 21 to 30. And actually, if you have time, read the entire Psalm from chapter, uh, from verses 1 all the way to 30. Now, the Word of God, as I said, is a light unto us. And uh, when we read the Word of God, it illuminates our paths and our ways. And so, um, you know, as Jesus was going about in his work in the various cities of Israel, the Bible says that if you read from, um, you know, Mark you know, 7, uh, Mark 8 and Mark 9, we see Jesus moving from city to city and, you know, uh, you know uh, teaching the word of God. The Bible says rebuking demons, healing the sick, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, and doing great things in the midst of, of the people. And in every city, many people followed Jesus. Many people wanted to uh, hear him. And on this, as we read in Mark 10, we see Jesus is on his way to, uh, to Jerusalem, where he had predicted his death. If you read Mark 10, 33 and, uh, to 33 and 34, you see, Jesus had predicted that he, you know, he is going you know, uh, to Jerusalem. And if I may read that, uh, Jesus says, We are going to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will keep him over to the, uh, give, they will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him 
and spit on him, flog him, and kill him, three days later he will arise. Jesus predicted his, you know, uh, his, he, you know, his own death. But that did not stop him from doing miracles. He didn't, that did not stop him from teaching the word of God. The Bible says he went from city to city doing great things. And it's despite through those cities, the power of God was manifested. In Mark 7, we see Jesus you know, healing uh, the deaf, um, a deaf and a mute, you know, deaf and mute man. And, you know, and in Bethsaida, you know, we see in Mark 8, 22 to 25, Jesus healing uh, you know, a blind man by spitting on his eyes and him receiving you know, uh, you know, his healing. In the city of Philippi, we see Jesus healing the boy with an evil spirit after they had come from the Mount of Transfiguration. And because of this, many crowd, you know, a large crowd was following Jesus wherever he went. And for every other city, so uh, as he passes in one city, then the, the, crowd, the crowd will increase and he moved on. And this continued on until where we are now, where we read, um, you know, in verse, you know, uh, in Mark 10 from verse 46. The Bible says, then he came to Jericho. Every city had a chance to hear from Jesus. And the Bible says that then he came to Jericho. And that is very significant because God has a chance for every one of us. You know, he may have visited your neighbors last week. He may have visited your friends the other day. But today God is saying this is your chance. As Jericho had a chance to hear from Jesus and to see the power of God being manifested and to experience the presence of God, the Bible says then they came to Jericho. A time for each one of us to experience God is at hand. At a time of each one of us to experience the move of God in our lives is here. Maybe you have waited, there's something that you have waited for so long and you've been trusting God. God, when are you going to move into my life? God, when are you going to do this thing for me? The Bible says by then he, he, they came to Jericho. Your opportunity to, you know, you know, to, to experience the power of God is here. Your appointment with the divine power of God has come. And this morning, I just want to bring a word of hope, a word of encouragement. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. It doesn't matter the situation or the circumstances that have befell your life. It doesn't matter what, you know, what, what, what you've been facing in the recent past. The power of God is here. And this is your opportunity. Say, say, say to yourself, this is my opportunity to experience the power of God. Amen. Then they came to Jericho. That, that really touches my heart. And as they came into the city, the Bible says that Jesus, accompanied by a big crowd, you know, ministered in Jericho. And as they were about to leave on the outskirts of the city of Jericho, something dramatic happened. The Bible says that as they went out towards the, end, the, 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 the exit of the city, there was a man by the name, you know, the blind man by the name of Batmaeus. This man had sat, you know, was blind, maybe from birth, uh, and he sat there for many, many years. Now, but Myers was, you know, alive with the information. It seems but Myers had heard about what Jesus of Nazareth had been doing in other cities. In fact, in the, in the city of Bethsaida, Jesus had, you know, healed a blind man. And this information must have traveled into all the other cities. Uh, you know, by then there were no you know, you know, social media or the technological advancement that we have today. But somehow, through traders, those who are moving from city to city, information was going from one city to the other. And the work and the miracles that Jesus Christ was doing was being manifested and it was being communicated in many other cities. So, you know, you know, but Myers was, though blind, he was streetwise. He had all the information. You can imagine sitting on a major highway uh, that leads or leads out to the city, from the city of Jericho. You know, he had heard about Jesus. So it was, he had heard all the miracles that Jesus had, had, you know, had done. And in his mind, he framed his own miracle. And he must have said to himself, if only 
that Jesus of Nazareth would come my way and heal me. I have heard he has done great things. I have heard he has healed the sick. I have heard he has touched the, 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 you know, the blind and the blind were healed. And, but Myers, the blind man, framed his, own, you know, he framed his own miracle and said, one day, I hope one day, one day, one day, if this Jesus Christ of Jesus son, you know, of Nazareth would come my way, I would find you know, myself healed. In his spirit, he must say, have said, you know, he, has, he must have framed his miracle. So when he heard a great commotion was coming, he really wanted to find out, you know, of course he couldn't see. He inquired and wanted to know what's going on because this was totally abnormal. It wasn't as usual to hear a big crowd that, you know, on, you know, where he sat. And he must have sat there for many years. But this particular morning or this particular day, there was a big commotion because a big crowd was coming by. And he was told that it was Jesus of Nazareth who was passing by with his disciples. That has, must have really made up his day. That must have been the greatest news that he received that morning. That Jesus, the Jesus that he, was belong, he had been longing all along, that Jesus would pass by or he may have an encounter with Jesus Christ of Nazareth so that his situation will be changed, so that the darkness in his life Lord, it will be changed. That Jesus of Nazareth, who is the light of the world, or that he may bring a change in his life. And he must have said to himself, now is the time for my miracle. Now is my time for my miracle. And remember, you know, Bart Myers stayed there as a person who was blind. He was blind, and he had not encountered Jesus before. But because of what he had, his faith had been spurred. And he said that to himself, that must be, this must be the day of my miracle. And we find something significant happened in his life. Everybody else referred to Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth. And this is significant because when he was told that it was Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus of Nazareth who was passing, the Bible says that he started calling out. The Bible said he started crying out. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. Mark the difference. He was told that he is Jesus of Nazareth. But he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In other words, he, 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 he cried out to Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, son of Nazareth, just, you know, is an identity of Jesus, the, you know, where he came from. That was Jesus with a geographical attachment or identity, Jesus of Nazareth. I would say Peter from Nakuru or Peter from Kiambu or from Peter from, you know, Kisumu or Kwale. That means that's where the person came from. But when you refer to when he referred to Jesus as Jesus, son, you know, son of David, have mercy on him, on me. He, ref, you know, he called upon the power of the of God that resident upon Jesus Christ. He was not seeing Jesus as from his humane side. He was seeing him as the Messiah, the promised one, the one who has solution to his problem. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This recognition of Jesus was contrary to the teaching and beliefs of the religious leaders of the day. He shouted again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me because he knew that, you know, he did not deserve, you know, the, you know uh, he did not deserve the mercies of the Lord. Because of his sinful nature, because of his, you know, uh, Adamic nature, you know, he did not deserve the healing. But he said he appealed to the masses of the Lord. The Bible says the masses of the Lord are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. The masses of God is what you call the unmerited favor of God. You know, what God does to us is not because we deserve it. It is because of his mercies. And we can appeal to Jesus, son of David, 
to have mercy on us. And we can cry like Batmaeus, you know, uh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And have mercy on me. It doesn't matter what kind of darkness has prevailed upon your life. But Myers lived with darkness for all his life. But this particular one day, when he heard that Jesus, son of David, was in the vicinity, he called and he cried. He opened his mouth and he cried to Jesus and cried, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he was convinced in his heart and his, you know, in his heart and his mind that his the time for his miracle had come, and the light of the world was passing by, you know, passing by. Though many people tried to shut him down, tell him to keep quiet, do not call, do not shout. He continued on shouting over and over again, "Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me." Jesus is passing by. Jesus, the presence of Jesus is here. For every one of us who shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, they shall be saved. It doesn't matter what you may be going through. It doesn't matter what situation you are facing today. It doesn't matter how long this has been. In the case of Batmaeus, it could have been for life. But on this particular day, when he heard Jesus, son of David, he was on his way and he was passing by where he was seated. He rose, shouted all the more, the Bible says. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus desires to have mercy on every one of us. Jesus desires to have you know, mercy on our situation. He desires to have mercy on our circumstances. He desires to have mercy on our ways. He desires to have mercy on our sinfulness. This is desire that all may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. The presence of Jesus, who is the word of God and the light of the world, removes darkness in our lives. In the Old Testament, the Bible says that the fire in the tabernacle was to be kept burning to cast away darkness. Leviticus 6, uh, verse 12 to 13 says, The fire on the altar should be kept burning on it. It shall not go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and he shall arrange the burnt offering on it, and shall burn on it the fat of the peace offering. Fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually. It shall not go out. The fire and the, the presence, the fire which signifies the presence of the Lord should not go out in our lives. Jesus is that fire. The Holy Spirit ignites that fire in our lives. Challenges in our lives may pose as darkness in our lives. They may dampen the fire in us. And the light of God in us sometimes may go dim. But the, spirit, the word of God is saying that the fire should be kept burning continually. The fire of the presence of God should remain burning all the day, every day. And the Bible says that the priest should bring, you know, bring wood and every morning and arrange the burnt offering on it and shall burn on it the, the fat of the peace offering. Every one of us is a priest before God. We believe in the priesthood of believers that you and I are you know, ordained. You, you know, we, we are priests of God. And we can be able to bring, you know, you know, cause the fire to remain burning by asking the Holy Spirit, you know, asking the power of God and the presence of God to indwell us. It doesn't matter what darkness may be prevailing. And, and, but with the presence of the Lord, and we see as Jesus is passing by, and the presence of God is in your life, then that fire will remain to, to, be, you know, to, be, to, 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 to be up. To be up. But praise the Lord that we have Jesus, the light of the world, and, you know, and the word of God. Jesus is both the light of the world and the word of, and the word of God. Psalms, the psalm we have read, Psalms 18, 20, 28 to 30, it says, uh, You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. My God turns my darkness into light. Darkness, there may be all manner of darkness, in both spiritual and physical. You know, one of the things that, you know, as children we feared most was darkness. And whenever it gets dark, everybody, you know, even now, you know, when it gets to seven past seven, going to midnight, everybody, uh, you know, because of darkness. Darkness has this, 
you know, power that, you know, or some this, you know, influence in us that causes us to feel insecure. When it gets dark, for example, if all the lights go off now, you know, and there is total darkness in this room, or the sun is covered by something, and there's total darkness in the city at this particular time, you know, everybody gets so worried. Bible says, keep you, Lord, you keep my lamp burning. Keep my, my lamp burning. You keep my lamp burning. You keep my lamp burning. My God turns darkness into light. God is in the business of turning darkness. Like in the case of Batmaeus, turning the darkness of, in his, of his life, turning the you know, darkness of blindness in his life into light. With your help, I can advance against the truth. With the help of the Lord, with the light of God in our lives, with the light of the word of God in our lives, we can advance against the truth. With God, I can scale a wall. In other words, with God, there is nothing which is insurmountable. With God, all things are possible. The Bible says that, you know, to, to, to all those who believe, he gave them power to become children of God. And there's nothing you cannot do. You can scale mountains. You can achieve great things. With God, I can scale a wall. As for me, his ways is perfect. The ways of the Lord are perfect. The word of the Lord is perfect. Because he says, you know, you know healing and deliverance is a, is, a, is a food for the children of God. And this day, the, you know, but Myers knew that when Jesus' presence is there, my miracle is going, you know, hap- is going to happen. The Lord's word, the Bible says, in, is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. And we find that man's taking refuge in Jesus Christ. And he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on, uh, on me. I don't know where you have taken refuge into. Many times we take refuge in things that cannot help us. We take refuge in things that cannot be of help to us. We take refuge in people and we are disappointed. We take refuge in systems and the system fails us. We take refuge in technology and technology also fails us. We take refuge in, in, a financial, in, a, in our financial strength or in, in our ability or in, a, in ability and we get, you know, we fail. We take refuge in our education and in our, in our other things. But the psalmist is saying today, the Lord's words is flawless. He shields, you know, he shields me. Uh, he shields all who take refuge in him. According to what you refer, you know, to the Joshua Project, and you can be able to check this online, darkness has prevailed the world. The biggest darkness that we face today is darkness of not hearing or you know, not hearing or not having the word of God. You can imagine people who live, they are born and they live and die without having heard about Jesus or having heard a word or even seeing a person who, who is a believer. According to the statistics by Joshua Project, uh, recent statistics show that globally, out of a population of uh, a, you know, uh, 8 million people in the world, we have a total of you know, uh, what you call people, people's group. These are like languages or people who share a common language. There are a total of 7,391 unreached people groups. These are people who are alive today they have never heard the word of God. They do not have scriptures in, the, in their language. Somebody said that when you tell someone the word of God in a foreign language, it goes into the head. But when you tell them in their mother tongue, it goes in their heart. And we are looking at approximately 3.4 billion people in the world that have never heard about Jesus. As I walked in the streets of Bangkok and saw, you know, and I see many people, you know, many people, you know, that do not know Jesus. They do not. Thailand is 98% Buddhist. But Christianity is less than 1%. And around the Southeast Asia region, there are many that do not know the Lord. There are many countries that are not yet opened for the gospel. And God has given us the burden to be able to share the word of God in Southeast Asia. 
you know, in countries, about 12 countries that are surrounding, you know, Thailand and in the Southeast Asia region. People that have never had completely, they have not even seen a Christian in their lives. They have been, they, you know, they have bleed throughout. And this represents about 42% of, you know, of the population, you know, of the population. And this is a big, and, uh, you know, a big number. Looking at, you know, in, in our own country here, and, you know, it, it has been said about 23 languages, 23 people groups in this nation do not have a Bible yet. And out of the population of about, you know, uh, you know uh, 5 million. And this represents about 10% of Kenyans who are unreached. They do not have the word of God in their own language. And this is the biggest darkness that we can ever think of. And Jesus came for this purpose. We need to cry out like Bart Myers. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on me. Because of this darkness that prevails you know, our generation, that prevails the globe today, that prevails you know, uh, the country, the, you know, our, our own country, that prevails also in our own families. Each one of us knows somebody that is not born again. Somebody who has not you know, given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of them are even in our churches. Some of them are in our families. Some of them are in our counties. Some of them are in our nation. Some of, many of them are in our continent. When you think of the Sahara region, the North African region, many people do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And what are we going to do about it? We need to cry unto the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one who takes away darkness out of our lives. He's the one who takes away this spiritual darkness of people that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one who's saying, you know, as we cry unto, unto, unto him, then he is going to you know, help us do something. But not only to cry, but to do something about it. Like going on a short-term mission or supporting the work of Bible Society or any other institution that is you know, uh, supporting Bible translation and distribution in this country and, and, and overseas. The Bible says in Psalms 119, your word is a lamp for my feet and a lamp on my, on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffer, suffered much, preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. The, the word of God is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. In this dark you know, dark times that we live in. You know, you need the light of God. You need the lamp of God for my faith. And, you know, you know for, for, for a third nation like us, we, we know what a lamp is. You know, the one when I come a footer, you know? You know, that's the lamp that we're talking about. You know, as you walk with it, it, it illuminates the path that you're walking in. Your word is a lamp for my faith a light on my path. You can imagine those who do not have, you know, the word of God. You can imagine the, the amount of darkness in their lives because they don't have, uh, you know, the lamp, you know, uh, you know, the word of God for their faith. They don't have the word of God for their path. So they are globing, globing in darkness. They don't know where to go. And God is asking us to cry, to cry like Bart Myers. Cry and cry and pray that God will send workers Send people to, you know, to, to, the, to, to the mission field. Send people to bring this light to the, to, to the, to the nation. The Bible says in Matthew 24, and in, my, in Matthew 24, verses 14, and this gospel, the Bible says, and this gospel, and this, and, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached into the whole world as a testimony to all, for all nations. And when you talk about nations, you're not talking about, you know, the geographical nations or political nations or geopolitical, geopolitical nations that we know, the boundaries that we know. We're talking about the people groups that have not been reached. And the Bible says, you know, this you know, gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Brethren, I want to bring to you that the Second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is predicated on, you know, on, on us preaching the gospel to every nation, to every person, to every per the, all the enriched people groups, so that then the kingdom of God will come. And he says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, you know, be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And so the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light on my, on my path. 
I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. It's not just having the word of God. The psalmist said, I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your, your, your righteous laws. I have suffered much, preserve my life. God is the one who preserves my, you know, our lives. But my husband have been there staying every other day, every other day. But when Jesus was passing by, when Jesus, the presence of God, came on his way, then things turned around. He says, preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. The word of the Lord is the one which preserves us. The word of the Lord is the one which preserves us. And so we see Jesus responding. Jesus responded to the cry of Bartimaeus. And that's one thing that I love about my God, that I love about God, that when we cry unto him, he's able, you know, he has the power to be able to respond to us, to respond to our situation, to respond to our circumstances. You know, the psalmist in Psalms 30, you know, Psalms 30 verses 1 and 2 and 3, the psalmist said, I will exhort you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths, the depths, and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O oh Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave, you spared me from going down into the pit. You know, the psalm is this is a psalm of David when he was very sick. You know, he was just about to die. The, but the Bible says that he called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I called to you for help and you healed me. When you call on the name of the Lord, when you call unto the Lord, God comes. Jesus hears our cry. Jesus hears our prayer. Jesus hears our petition. Jesus hears when we call on him. He said, the psalmist said, I called unto you for help and you healed me. You know, Maybe you have somebody, a relative or yourself that going through sickness like David at this particular time in Psalm 30. But the Bible says that David called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, you brought me out from the grave. Maybe the report of the doctor said you have, you know, maybe a relative or your life, just a few days to live. David says you brought me up from the grave and you spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his, of his. Praise his holy name. God hears when you call. But Myers called, despite the discouragement and the rebuke from the, those who are nearby, the Bible says he called all the more. Do not give up on calling upon God. Do not give up on calling upon the name of the Lord. Keep on calling. Your time is now. And when the presence, the presence of God brings change and transformation. So we see three responses that Jesus had uh, you know, uh, to the call of, uh, you know, uh, to the, the, the cry uh, of uh, Bartimaeus. We see three responses. And the first response we see is that Jesus called, you know, uh, you know, called Bartimaeus. He said, call him. Call him over. That's what the Bible says. That Jesus, you know, stopped and said, call him. Jesus gives us attention when we cry to him. When we call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says we shall be saved. And when we call, Jesus responds. God responds. The Bible says Jesus stopped the convoy. Jesus stopped, you know, the, the entourage. He stopped and he said, this, call that man who is, you know, appealing to me. Call that man who is appealing to the masses of the Lord. Jesus heard the cry and he stopped. He called the man to himself and he was touched. He, Jesus was touched by the desperate cry of the blind man. Many times when you go before the Lord and you cry your heart out, you cry tears, you know, before the Lord, maybe in your bedroom, maybe in your closet, maybe when you come to church here for prayer, and you go before the Lord with the depth, from the depth of your heart, and you call upon the name of the Lord desperately. The Bible says God, Jesus, saw the, the desperate cry of the blind man, and he sensed his deep need in the life of the blind man, but Myers. 
He may have been blind since birth, as I said. His life was full of darkness. He had never seen the light of the day from birth, maybe. But the light of the world, Jesus Christ, the son of David, was on his way. And he had stopped and given him attention. The call, the first response you see is the call of Jesus. The call of God through Jesus is still here today. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and abandoned, and I will give you rest. Come to me. The, the invitation is still open today. And Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and abandoned. I don't know what is making you worry. I don't know what is making you feel burdened in your life. Maybe it's something in your family. Maybe something in your work. Maybe something in your, in your business. Whatever it is that is making you weary and burdened. You feel heavy. You feel you know, like you do not have strength. Jesus' call is still open today. And we see that was the response that Jesus gave to the blind but minds. The call of Jesus is open today. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. When Batmas called upon the name of the Lord, said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, that day he found his rest. That day he found his rest for his soul, but because he could be able to see it again. Bible says, for, he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The call from Jesus is still open today. The call of Jesus is still open. The invitation is still there. I pray that you shall hear the call of Jesus saying, come, come to me. It doesn't matter what your burdens are. It doesn't matter the situation and the darkness around us. The call of Jesus is still open to us. The second response of Jesus is what I call the question of Jesus. The first one was the call of Jesus. The second one is response is the question of Jesus. So when he called him, and the Bible says he took threw off his cloak and jumped to his feet and came to Jesus, very excited, you know, like he was going to get instantly his healing he was confronted by a question from Jesus and that must have hit his expectation down because maybe he thought by being called by Jesus that it will just happen and the, the you know uh, the, the miracle would happen but Jesus asked him what do you want me to do for you that is the question that Jesus is asking every one of us. The, what, the question, what do you want me to do for you? What is the miracle that you're looking for? The third thing we see is the demand of Jesus. The demand of Jesus, you know, he said to him, go. Go. Immediately, the blind man received his faith. You know, he said, go, your faith has healed you. And immediately received his sight and followed Jesus. Three things. The call of Jesus, the question of Jesus, the demand of Jesus. There are many that have not heard the gospel. There are many that have not heard the word of God. There are many that have not received the, new, the, 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 the word of God, the gospel. And it says this gospel of the kingdom of God will need to be preached to all nations so that then the, the end will come. In other words, then the Christ will come. But there are many who have not you know, received, you know, this word. Jesus says, go ye therefore, in Matthew 28, you know, verses 18, 19, and 20, he says, go ye therefore. It's the same thing that Jesus told, the, you know, the blind but minds. He said, go. And it's the same, you know, an, you know, breath that Jesus, in Matthew 28, you know, says, all power and authority has been given to me. Therefore, go. The demand of Jesus is that you go. The demand of Jesus, after you've received your miracle, is that you go and tell others. Make disciples, the Bible says, make disciples of every nation. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
teaching them all what I have commanded you. And lo, I shall be with you to the close of ages. That is a demand of Jesus. What are you doing with the demand of Jesus in your life? He told but Myers, therefore go. Go, the Bible says, and then from then on, but Myers followed Jesus. In other words, he became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to become a disciple of Jesus Christ is to become a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many people did you tell this week that Jesus Christ is Lord? How many people did you tell this week, you know, last week, you know, that Jesus, you know, can heal, that Jesus can save? Are we shy of the demand of Jesus? Are we fulfilling the great commission call of go? The demand of Jesus upon our lives is to go. Go. Your faith has healed you. He received the demand of Jesus even before his healing. So, so it's a very interesting thing, you know, the response of Jesus. The way Jesus responds to us. Jesus responds by calling him, by asking him a question, and by giving him a demand. Up to this point, but Myers was still blind. But he obeyed the call of Jesus. He obeyed he answered the call of the, or the question of Jesus by giving the answer, I want to see. And then he received the demand of Jesus, go. And it's on, on those three factors, on those three variables that he received his sight. He said, your faith, your faith has made you well. Our obedience to the call of God our obedience to the question of Jesus in terms of recognizing his authority and who he is and what he can do to us. Because Jesus obviously knew that this man was blind. Being the son of God. So that question was almost rhetoric. You know, what do you want me to do? But Jesus wanted to bring that question so that he, you know, but Myers can, you know, uh, you know, can express the authority. He can show the authority of Jesus. That Jesus has the authority to deal with the situation. And then we'd see the demand of Jesus. What are you doing? What are you going to do with the call of Jesus? What are you going to do with the, call, the question of Jesus? What are you going to do with the demand of Jesus? Go. Go ye therefore. This is the same demand which Jesus places on each one of us today. If you have to remove the darkness in the world. If the 7,000 unreached people groups globally and 23 in Kenya are to see the light of God and the word of God, I invite you to be an agent of change, to remove darkness in our own lives, in our own families, in our nation, and globally by crying, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Shall we pray? Almighty and everlasting Father, I want to thank you and bless you because you are a good God. Thank you, Lord, because you hear our cry when we call on you. Thank you because you are always there for us and you never leave us nor forsake us. You know our situation, you know our circumstance, dear Lord. And even this morning, dear Father, in, you know, we, we want to ask that, Lord, you touch us. Many of us have gone through darkness in our lives, in our situation and circumstance. I pray that, Lord, there will be healing in the lives, in our lives. Lord, even as the song goes, pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I pray that, Lord, you will not pass anyone here today. Whatever situation, circumstances have brought darkness into your lives, I want to believe God for deliverance, for healing, for restoration, for revival, that God will do a new thing and that all of us will become agents of change. Father, I bless you and worship your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.